The Night the Sky Lit Up by Leonard I. Eckhaus. The planet Earth, on which we all live, is part of the great, vast Milky Way galaxy. When we look up at the sky, each of the planets and the stars we see are in the Milky Way. In all, over 400 billion stars twinkle in the night sky. It's a magnificent sight, but it wasn't always so. Between 200 and 300 million years ago, a gathering of planetary gases was beginning to come together and form what appeared to be an almost solid sphere. The other hundreds of billions of asteroids and suns and moons and all the constellations that lived in the greater universe saw this happening in the Milky Way and gave this new sphere the name Sirius, the child, because she was a brand new star and just beginning to evolve. Even during her earliest years, Sirius always loved looking down at the Earth and all the other planets from her perch so far up in the sky. And at 19 million miles away, she was one of Earth's nearest neighbors. She wanted to call out to Earth to let it know that its blue horizon so visible even way back then was absolutely beautiful. For many years, Sirius was very lonely. She looked out at the universe and hoped desperately to find a friend. She felt so alone and often cried herself to sleep. Sirius didn't realize it, but she was growing in size every day, and some of the other stars were taking notice. In fact, one, named Capella, eventually made contact with her. Sirius, Capella whispered one evening when she found Sirius softly crying to herself. My name is Capella. Why are you so unhappy? And Sirius began, My dear Capella, I am unhappy because all day, every day, I just sit here, high up in the sky, and do absolutely nothing. I bring no happiness anywhere. I have not one single friend. Is this all my life is to be? No, answered Capella. You are very young. You will not be lonely. You will live yet for millions of years, and I will be your friend. Thank you, Capella, said Sirius. And with this, a warm feeling spread within her, and a smile pursed her lips. For an instant, just a momentary blink in time, the sphere of gases that were becoming Sirius twinkled with a bright white light. Just like that. And then, poof, it was gone. That moment rippled throughout all of Sirius's being, and she felt a strange but enjoyable tingling that she'd never experienced before. She enjoyed that feeling. She didn't know how it had come to be, but she wished she could make it happen again. She didn't know that as she gazed out to the universe and spied other stars, she would occasionally notice one momentarily shining, just as she had. As time went on, thinking back on that moment, she would often ask Capella, when will I light up again? and Capella would tell her, all stars light up on occasion, even me. You're not yet fully formed, my child, but when you are, I promise you, when you light up, you will shine as none other, and your beauty will be seen by everyone that lives on the planet Earth. As time went on, Sirius experienced several more moments of the sputtering light and of the special tingling it spread throughout her very soul. And although she didn't realize it, this only happened when she was interacting with Capella. But neither Sirius nor Capella yet realized what caused these special moments. One day, Sirius was feeling really sad. Many years had gone by since Capella had spoken to Sirius, and she really missed her. Capella, she cried to herself, where have you gone? Why have you left me so alone? And Capella heard her and answered, I've been going through the process of expansion and cooling, becoming a red giant. This is a process we all go through, and this will also happen to you, but not for many, many more years. I'm sorry I could not be with you during that process, but I am back now. And Sirius was so happy, and again felt that special warm feeling. And She smiled, and then, just for an instant, she once again glowed. This hasn't happened in so long, she shouted to Capella, and as she said that, she finally realized why it had been so long. This only happened when she was with Capella, when she smiled, when she was happy. She gazed out at the horizon again and saw that none of the stars were lit. I wonder, she thought. The next time she spoke to Capella, she told her what she'd been thinking. When I'm happy, when I smile, I light up, she explained. And as if to offer proof, she smiled at Capella. 
and with the smile came the tingling sensation and the light within her breaking to her surface. She went on, The more I smile, the more I light up, and when I light up it makes me happy, and it makes me want to smile even more. What if I always smiled? What if all the stars always smiled? Would we all light up? At that, Capella herself smiled, and sure enough, the whole of her lit up for just a second. Wow, she said, after millions and millions of years, it took you to discover this magic power we stars have. And then they both smiled, and again, both lit up. Capella, Sirius said, we're both happy right now, so why don't we practice smiling all the time and see what happens? And they did. And they both stayed lit up, glittering in the sky. Capella, if we tell all the other stars and get them all smiling, we could light up the whole sky. And they did. And it worked. And that very night, for the first time ever, over 400 billion stars twinkled in the night sky of the Milky Way. And they've been there lighting the sky ever since. And Sirius was the brightest star of all. And because each of us has within ourselves the ability to radiate happiness, it's not just the stars, but the faces of people, too, that light up when they smile. Facts about stars Sirius and Capella are the real names of two of the brightest stars in the universe. Sirius is 19 million miles from Earth, and it takes four years before the light from Sirius can be seen on Earth. So if a star burns up and disappears, it will still be seen from Earth for many years after it's actually gone. A constellation is a group of stars that resemble an animal or other object. A red giant is a star in its last phase of evolution. Things to discuss. Which are brighter, stars or planets? What does the sun give us that the moon cannot?